Radio uh, tonight. Um, ah, we have Darren online. Um, is Darren there? I think Darren is there. That's why we start a little bit later. Uh, he is not there. Okay. Um, we want to talk about the spell of your story and the people's public trust. People's public trust is not the one people's public trust, but the idea that uh, gets stolen from uh, Darren D.O.G. And uh, we also have here uh, BJ. Evening all. We have uh, Lee. Evening, Jabba. <laughs> and uh, Bob is operating the show and anytime welcome, he wants to share something. Uh, I think we even get uh, Darren here now. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, today is a very strange day, I have to say. Uh, um, BJ broke my studio. <laughs> I could fix it. Um, but uh, I don't know if the moon from yesterday influenced very much what is really going on. 
And uh, but uh, I discover uh, Darren when he was talking on the Bilderberg meeting. He said he just uh, uh, walk around and suddenly uh, grab the microphone to to make a speech. And I contact him uh, because I also saw a couple of videos uh, afterwards uh, how he talk about things. And one thing that he was talking about is the whole spelling about uh, spelling words uh, in the law and in the society, and uh, even um, that we spell our own story. Um, like. Uh, uh, I, I live in the French part here in Switzerland, and um, I think French French people. Uh, I always say that to the French people too, not only in English. Uh, is they put very much importance on how you spell the words, so much that even if you come just from another city uh, and you talk to them, it's like uh, they just tell you uh, that you have a, a strange accent or something and that that creates so much separation that uh, the, the spell get very much uh, importance too uh maybe lee can help us uh, a little bit about uh, the people's public trust uh, can you tell a little bit uh, what it is so uh, if uh, darren arrived to to come uh, so he uh, he can explain it further yeah well hello up uh, hey up have we got a darren oh uh, we got darren yeah, yeah that's right yeah, yeah that's right yeah <laughs> sorry i had to travel to get a signal there i was i was uh, we've got mass problems where we live so we had to travel out of town to the next town to kind of get a signal <laughs> no problem thanks for for coming on the show we we just put uh, another song between and uh, I try to, uh, or I explain just how I discover you on the Bilderberg when you uh, was not supposed to have a, a speech and you, you grabbed the microphone. And uh, that was the first video I saw from you. And then uh, I, I saw some other. Um, just to tell you that we also have uh, Lee on the show and uh, BJ. Hello. Hi, guys. And uh, Bob is also uh, is operating the show and also coming maybe. And I think, wow. uh, uh, I feel like I'm in a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, we want, we want to hear mostly what, what you have to say about, uh, oh, like I, I told you this morning about the spell of your story. And I put, uh, yeah. not uh, our story or his story. I, I put your story and that uh, is because, uh, um, I want to first know also your story, uh, how you unspell your story or, uh, uh, what, what you put out exactly with the spell. Uh, I think that is a, yeah. for me, and I want later we, we can talk about the, the people's public trust. A lot of people are yeah. interested in that project too. But uh, let's yeah. start with the spell of our story or his story or yeah. your story. Yeah, well, I, I always rather start with your story rather than my story, that's for sure. <laughs> 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 um, it's always a bit a bit dull in filling the back of life, really, isn't it? Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, I, so so you saw the short talk was it at Bilderberg or was it the longer one? Just the short one when I wasn't meant to be getting up and we ended up yeah. being Oms. Is that the one? Wow, yeah, yeah. the short that one. That was yeah. that was quite radical. That was unusual. I've, I've never had to do that um, mm. before, and uh, it was really quite testing for me. So I'm, I'm 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 interested in your experience of that being the first contact, basically, but. Um, yeah, I think, I think there's been this common thing about spells and spelling recently now because a lot of people are talking about it. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, the understanding the art of the spell and how it actually works is just a lot more than, than a bit of wordplay or, or breaking words up. That's very, very much the beginning of it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you, when just, I get you, just, arts, yeah. you just spelled uh, one of the words we, we try to change since a while. That is the understanding. And uh, we, we put in place uh, the overstanding. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Thing is, though, I mean, in, in a normal context, there's nothing wrong with understanding. It's only in the legal context that it brings you a problem. And it's, I think one of the challenges that we've got in the modern world is the, the specialization of language based on context or field. So what words mean in a particular field varies. So if we're talking about um, 
you know, if we're talking about uh, legalese, then certain words like person and understanding mean different things. Whereas if we're mm -hmm. talking in an everyday context, um, then then they don't. And, uh, you know, we, we need to be fluid rather than fixated on that, I think. So mm -hmm. I've been in many sovereign groups over the years where there's this real fixation or fear of the word person or understanding. And these people got, you know, there's just a bit of an overreaction to it. And it's like, no. One of the one of the primary rules about spelling is that it's all about context, and the, mm -hmm. the the context is what gives you everything. So don't be afraid of words themselves. It's all about the context, and the application is the main thing. Um, and you know, the 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 art of the spelling you were you were saying that it's all about spelling your story. And for me, that's what the the goal here is, is mm -hmm. understanding what it is to be the storyteller of your own life. You know, this is about authority. Um, and what people start doing is they start by allegedly challenging authority, but it's it's not really challenging authority. It's discovering one's own authority. There, mm -hmm. there, there is no authority on the land. You know, it's about humans interacting with other humans. But, mm -hmm. we, you know, we're, we're taught a different thing from that. And we then have to go up. You know, we, we, there's all, this is the journey everybody's on is discovering what authority actually is. So we're, we're, we're born and brought up buying into a story of humanity this is what the sort of authority is about the author so this is where the concept of the story comes from so um you know at home the the storyteller or the authority was mum or dad at school it was the teacher at work it's the employer and it, while in that place the authority tells you how to behave what are the rules to behave there and what you should do while you're here and you know so all these little micro authorities we've encountered have uh, have often taken up our attention when we're forgetting about the big authority or the big story. And that is the story of humanity, of what it is to be a human being, why human beings are here, what they're for, what is it a good human being should, quote unquote, should, you know, that guilt-laden word of should, what should we be doing with our time to be of worth to our species? I mean, these are the, these are the big questions of the big story. And, mm -hmm. um the big one we're doing is, is trying to undo that. But at the minute, we don't have a commonly agreed replacement for that story. And this is something that we're, we're discovering together, I think. But the only place we have to start with is our own lives. And so the mm -hmm. big thing for me is people are so much about rebelling against some out, outside authority. But mm -hmm. in actual fact, it's no, don't rebel against an outside authority. Find your internal authority. And then you won't find yourself in conflict. You know, you'll find yourself with presence and gravitas and effectiveness in, in so many different situations, but only through understanding how we spell our own fallibility, we spell our own weakness, we even spell our own demise with our expectations and the words we say about ourselves. Is that also we about our like, um, uh, I say um, well, the protests, uh, like uh, it's a lot about the uh, protests in, in this time also since the, like the Arab Spring and the Occupy yeah. movement and, and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What what I discovered or what I observed uh, in um, when uh, Bush want to go to Iraq, uh, there was a huge amount of people in the streets. And before um, before that, well, they they saw the 9/11, and then uh, Bush said that we have to attack the terrorists. And uh, uh, two two years later, he he want to invade Iraq. Everybody was in the street, and I say. Um, this you, you're going to promote the war for him. Um, yeah. That is that is what I saw. What happened? Uh, I, exactly. I never saw so much so much people in the street protesting. Uh, most most of them against the war instead yeah. of, of yeah. peace already. And uh, the other side is also like uh, what happened uh, uh, right now. Is all the protests. And what I'm saying is that. Uh, if you protest against a system, you give them credit, and otherwise they will just they will just put more uh, police uh, in place to uh, prevent this kind of thing. What do oh, you think about that? Honestly, that is that is absolutely the nail on the head. This is about spelling duality into an ongoing existence. So people are talking about unity principles, or they're talking about unity idealism, but they're not aware that their everyday behaviour and thought process is dualistic and separative. And they're not aware of how they fall into that trap every moment. So, like you say, if you're if you're protesting against a position that somebody else is taking, if you're even mulling it too much and feeding it with any energy, then then you're you're giving it substance and value. Um, mm -hmm. You're still telling the same story. You're just telling a different perspective on the same story or the same thing. I mean, I do invite people sometimes to consider that every single event that you've ever heard of, everything, every single. Th 
thing right the way back to childhood when you were not present. So you weren't there. If you weren't there, then it is just a story. And what that means is it's actually a story of somebody else's life. And that is to ponder the reality of that, what it is to realize that we often tar our own life with stories of other people's. That is incredible because that's like saying, you know, the lady down the street got burgled, so I'm going to get a burglar alarm. Do you know what I mean by that? So then it's like saying yeah. that because something has happened to somebody else, I am now in fear of the same thing happening to me because yeah. then, then what we're doing is we're jumping into the same pot as them without understanding the uniqueness of our own life. Say, well, yeah. actually, what you've, what you've just done is by buying that burglar alarm because the lady down the road got, got burgled is you're, you're starting to tell the same story. You're feeding the same story. So this is what's coming out through the media and the press is, is a story of humanity. Even the alternative media, it's deadly because it has people telling horror stories about the world from a really terrifying perspective. And mm -hmm. while people makes them, it makes them feel aware, there's a downside, there's the hidden downside that they can often feel powerless and overwhelmed to do something about it because how can they stop bombs from dropping on people in Iraq. How can you stop the gas coming out of the, the plane's bombs as they're flying over the sky when you don't even know who's doing it? So while, while there's the illusion of empowerment through, a, through awareness of something going on, there's a mm. veiled power powerlessness in there that just people keeps people glued to their seats and to the to the media because they're, 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 they're so starved of, of effective action and so this is where protest becomes used as a tool and without people realizing that they're just telling the same story so what you've got is you've got you know it's like this concept of um you know the great plan of the illuminators or whatever you know the illuminati are mm -hmm. doing this or the ruling elite are doing this and it's like nonsense 12 people in a room cannot change the world but that if they get you to tell their story and then you're telling it to another people and then 12 million of us are telling that story, that's a different tale of mm. together. That will change the I, world. I, I but saw what we've also, done is we've used. I, I saw also yeah. about um, uh, the most peaceful people They put some, uh, some, some pictures out of, uh, about uh, uh, animal cruelty. And uh, they they get the worst killer. They say, "Oh, this one I I could hang up, I couldn't beat him, I could uh, stamp on him, and I don't know what." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that is just amazing. The most peaceful guy who just uh, claim uh, uh, peace uh, for, for the whole world. And like I say, also like um, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's such hypocrisy. Go on. <laughs> yeah, the peace, peace, um, fighting for peace is like fucking for virginity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, people can be so wrapped up in their feelings and reaction to things that they're not aware of how much they are actually feeding it and recreating it in the now. It all depends mm -hmm. on perspective. It's like, what role do you believe you have in, in the great tale of humanity? Um, you know, people really play down the worth and the value of their thought process and of their the power of their interaction with other people. But yet we're all expressions of you know the epitome mammal or the, you know the, the master mammal of this planet and you know so many people play down the worth of their interactions and it's all about the spelling aspect again where they've they, they just absolutely have um hobbled themselves without being aware of it and beliefs that their contribution isn't worth anything or that what they do isn't worth stuff and so then then they get left with this pot of frustration or dense energy that just comes out like you say as the the animal rights protest are wanting to you know torture the 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 the, the person that you know um gives in, injects mice with stuff or, or, or things like that and it's just it just becomes this horrendous hypocrisy um mm. where people aren't looking at the real issues which are actually well what's going on in your life because that's the one that counts what is going on in your relationships in your connections with the human beings that are around you are you able to even interact with them or are you so caught up in the frustration of um all your considerations of the world that all they get to see is the stony face and your frown and your introverted gaze because you can't even see that they're walking past you because you're mulling over the problems of humanity so much but believing that you're helping because you're stewing over these ideas without realizing that, that you're depriving humanity of your presence because you're so caught up in the mental realms It's, it's, it's such a tricky position we find ourselves in, in terms mm -hmm. of, well, what is the effective method of change? What is the route to, to transport humanity to a, a, a different life? And people, people seem to think 
it's about taking on the big issues. It's about taking on the big challenges. Go for the, the heads of corporations and things like that. And yet still they're not looking at the, the, the starved humanity that are surrounding them. And what they're starved of is of the human contact. And, mm. um, you know, the, the, I'm seeing changes in that now. And there is much more humanity on the streets than there used to be, I think. But they're still riddled with a very cold hypocrisy there where of judgment and themism. You know, when it's about them or, you know, or about the sheeple and things like that. And people are mm. creating separatist groups and separatist thinking all the mm. time without realizing that, well, you know, we're all bits of that sheeple. And sometimes we are all playing the role of sheeple at times. And there is no, you know, the, the, the concept of awake is such a such a misused term where people seem to think that, oh, becoming aware that you've been lied to by your representatives, that's not awake, that's just starting to pay attention, you know. <laughs> uh, they're, not, mm -hmm. they're not actually necessarily the same thing. Um, and defi trying to decide how to act effectively, that's a much more awake action. And so it mm -hmm. can be, you can have people who are doing nothing or seem to be doing nothing, but actually, if they're managing their attention and they're not feeding the problems of the world, they can be much more effective as an awake entity than people who are out ranting in the streets every week. You know, it's, it's, it's a funny thing. There's a thing yeah. a friend of mine and I, we have a bit of a joke about a thing that we call the rise of the false positive. And the rise of the false positive is all this sort of pious new ageism of either a spirituality or a protesting against globalism and capitalism that's, that seemed to be some kind of pious moral higher, higher ideal. But in actual fact, it's a false positive reading of, of good growth because it's masking dealing with the real issues. So you've got the, the, the you've got the, the people who won't interact. So they'll be like, I'm not going to interfere because I'm adopting this pious, this pious position of non-intervention. And I will, you know, I'm not going to get into situations that make me angry or upset me because that's, that's not where I'm at spiritually or, or whatever they want to say. But actually what they're doing is they're hiding from their own anger. They're hiding mm -hmm. from their own lack of skill at confronting issues that really upset them. And it's a false positive reading of this pious meditator who's actually not dealing with the actual issues of their life that will bring them the power and the presence that they seek. Or similarly, you've got the people out there who think that they are doing a valid protest by screaming abuse and trying to attack or, or throw things at, at the, who they believe are the evil decision makers when in actual fact they're, they're engaging in exactly the same behavior as the entirety of the American and British forces, which and, and all the all the forces engaged in in um, such crazy wars, where it's about attacking that which is unknown, you know. So if somebody lives in a way that you don't understand, or there's something about the way that they live that you don't really understand, then you know we're going to attack that, we're going to kill that, let's wipe that out, let's annihilate that, and that's actually what we try to do to, to aspects within ourselves that we don't understand. So, you know, when there's bits of us that react, either when we're emotionally reacting to things or mentally reacting and, and we're then ashamed of our outburst or whatever, the common reaction in personal growth is to either, uh, rather than deal with it, is to mask it and conceal it, pretend it doesn't exist or pretend we were temporarily possessed and blame things like the alcohol or the situation or it was them or whatever, when in actual fact, we're engaging in the same practice. It's a microcosmic and macrocosmic mirror where within you know i can be sitting there piously saying i don't support the war in iraq and blah blah, blah. I, I signed the petitions and i went to the protest but within oneself if that person is seeking to subjugate and annihilate the vulnerable emotional parts of self that can't defend itself then it's like mate you are the manifestation you are it you are the problem you might as well be wearing bush's jacket you know mm -hmm. but that guy could be the one at the front of the g8 protest on the front of the independent and everybody thinks he's mr anonymous especially and in actual fact it's complete complete upside down so this is what we call this this false positive reading and we need to be so careful you know almost every spell every word every concept has been used at both positive and negative poles at the point now where almost everything is cliche and the only thing we've got to rely on is is uh, our, our own experience and our own sense of substance and connection and I think there's more people getting tuned into that but uh, there's a, a very very long way to go and an awful lot of uh, problematic reactions out there because people are still blaming rather than owning where they're at within themselves you know humanity has still mm -hmm. got a long way to go before it finds its, its personal power in that respect you know it's um but, but that is part of of uh, reverse psychology and that that um we we, we still have, have a source of that or how 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 do you explain that kind of uh, creation what what i observe is that like um all this is the issue of, uh, let's say, the, the, the first world or the Western world, 
because uh, yeah. when you go to simple people uh, uh, around the world, they they don't have these kind of issues, you know. Uh, so so uh, it, yeah, no, it, it has no, to be yeah. a source. It has to be a. Uh, uh, well, yeah, well, how do you explain this source? This is this is a this is a a, a, a big question, and it's one that um, I only have radical answers for. I'm afraid, and um, it's it's about it's <laughs> no about problem. perspective. Isn't it? Yeah, it's all right because I mean, you know, you can, you can take many different perspectives um, or scales, microcosmically and macrocosmically, when we're looking at stuff. You know, we could be looking at it at a cellular level, we could be looking at it at the human experience level, we could be looking at it at a so-called spiritual level or a cosmic level or whatever. And for some for some questions. Um, there, there are only abstract answers, and yeah. for the problem, for the problem that we're discussing here, the only writings or or experience I've come across that that, that I resonate with are in the works of uh, Alice Bailey, and um, there's some really interesting. So she was a 1920s esotericist. She was a student of H.P. Blavatsky. I know a lot of people aren't that keen on that work, but it was transitional work at the time, and I. And I, just, I still think some of some of Bailey's work is some of the most incredible writing I've come across. And in it, what they're talking about is the um, the evolution of the species. But so many people are familiar with the concept that you know humanity seems to be evolving through the energy centers, or evolving through the chakras in some way, or evolving through the bodies. And that's kind of you can generally look at that. Where if you look across time, we began. Um, with uh, our focus being survivalism and survival-based exploration. So we were looking at shelter and warmth and food and continuity in that respect. And it was all about the physical. Um, and then something happened at some juncture. There's many tales about it in many traditions around the world, but what the trigger was is unknown. But there was some kind of emotional awakening within humanity that didn't seem to be there before. And that was the birth of, um, you know, um, uh, kind of desire based thinking so where where the pursuit was beyond the basic survivalism and it became about pleasure and it became about desire and it became about um, um that sort of not not necessarily just sensual gratification but certainly sensual exploration so that is like literally the exploration of the senses so once we we developed a stability of survivalism there was this awakening into basically moving from the first chakra to the second chakra so moving from the first center consciousness to the second center consciousness. So this is when, um, you know, we're not long out of that era, to be honest. So this was, um, you know, you could consider it to be along the times of the myths of Atlantis, you know, when, when humanity was, was in a, a watery consciousness or, or, or a watery astral-based desire. And we've still got words that have connotations to, like that, like the word merchant. You know, the word merchant um, has, has really strong Atlantean links because the term mer we only use as a prefix for sort of um, ocean-based things and the concept of the merman or the mermaid as being this half half water creature, half human. And, uh, you know, the mer chant could almost be considered to be the music of the sirens, you know, alluring us to to whatever whatever certain doom. And here we are living in a world where, you know, you know, you know <laughs> we're surrounded by the, the spells of the merchants with the, the sign of entrance over their doorways enticing us in, you know, and it's entrance, 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 and we're allured in there to part with our powers. But um, I'm digressing there. The point being that, that we awakened into a second, second emotional, bo the second body, and that was uh, at its early stage about desire, at its later stage about the cultivation of morals, ethics, and somewhat, and uh, this led us to um, the next awakening, which was that of the mind, or the well, specifically the lower mind. And what's interesting is that the esoteric texts refer to it as concrete mind, because the lower mind believes that ideas are real, so it believes they're like concrete. So ideas like politics or existentialism or philosophy, the intelligent mind thinks that those are real things when they're not real. They're they're just they're just momentary points of consideration as of abstract irrational being um, and yet the, the the lower mind seeks to make them rigid now what's in, what's really challenging is that in the works of Bailey she is suggesting that each of the races of man represent cellular explorations into developing expertise in those chakras or in those centers so what she's suggesting is that the africans and the aborigine races and the black races were about the excellence of the first chakra 
the excellence of the body, the excellence of survivalism and of that sort of um, a, a grounded based connection with nature, no less divine and no less capable of accessing the divine, but it, it being achieved through physical excellence and physical alignment. The suggestion was that the Eastern races um, or the yellow man, as you would call them, uh, or the Oriental were about the excellence of the second chakra or the emotions and that the, 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 the yellow man went to um, fully explore the fullness of the mastery of the emotional body or center. And then beyond that, there was, um, then we had the arrival of the Aryan or the, or the white race, which is what she's suggesting are that their role was the mastery of the intellectual or concrete mind. And what we find in the world around us is that the, the, the manufacturings of the Western world are literally concrete edifices to represent the ideas that have been thought of. So we create the edifices for royalty and governance and hierarchy. We create the edifices of law and order and morality and education. It's happening in the world where we're looking at the paving over of the rest of the world. So, you know, you can go to Egypt now and get McDonald's delivered to, deliver to your door. You can go to the Czech Republic and find Tesco. You know, these ideas are being ceded to the rest of the world where, like you said, these were much sim more simplistic cultures because they represented explorations of different aspects of interacting with our environment from a different anchor point within the human, the human framework. And what we're seeing is um, a representation of what happens within all, all of us, which is the concrete mind seeks to pave over the rest of the self with its ideas of how life should be. So the concrete mind within each of us dictates how the emotions should behave how the body should behave, what they should do, and how they should do it. What we find is our, emotionals turn, our emotions turn around and say, well, so do you, I can't be bothered with that. I'm not going to live up to that aspiration. Bugger off. And there's an internal conflict or internal war takes place. And most people are living in that place. They're living in the place of the war between the mind and the emotions, where part of them wants chocolate, part of them doesn't. Part of them wants to live in a tidy house, part of them can't be bothered. You know, part of them would like their life to be this, that, and the other, and the other part can't be bothered doing the things required to make it that way. And... That, 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 that what we are what we are living in in the world is is a situation that is an exact representation of that. So the the, the, the paving of the, the the concrete world of the West over the rest of it is simply a mirror image of what's going on within us. And this again is about how people can understand how they can really act to change the world. It's not about fretting about these big situations. Realizing it's a mirror of what's going on within us. And if we tackle that problem. And actually, we are doing our damnedest duty. We're doing better than we could if we attended every protest going. And we can do it from the comfort of our own living room without actually going anywhere. But it's realizing that that's how powerful everybody's role actually is. And this, this comes back to the and point is, of what you is, said. Yeah? Sorry? Go on. No, no, you can. Uh, when, uh, when, uh, is, is, don't you think it's also like a, a, a cycle, uh, uh, a universal cycle, a uh, uh, earth cycle, a uh, humanity, uh, a cycle yeah, yeah, that yeah. that is? Yeah. Well, I think it's more like to do after with, a calendar, or, or or. No, I think it's about it's about a process. So I um, I mean, in some of the experiences mm -hmm. I had um, in my past, in terms of my story, um, I had experiences that that, that showed that, um, and again, this is just purely from from my experience anyway, but that what's happening on the planet is that um, so most people's concepts of consciousness and what they are as a being and all the rest of it is about animating a form to seek mastery over it. So the process of evolution is, is, is derived through uh, the mastery and excellence in a form that we can then be released from, whereas um, once, achieved, once mastery is achieved, whereas for a planet, it's, it's different. And in planetary evolution, they evolve through dreaming forth more complex blueprints out of their own substance. And what happens is there's only mm. one DNA strand on the planet. Everything, that's why we're 98% the same as pigs and, you know, 95% the same as trees, because there is only one DNA strand on this planet. We're all made of planetary stuff molded in different ways. And what's happening is we're going through the process of the, the known issues associated with the human blueprint. Um, and I think this is where, you know, when uh, uh, um, I think that our, you know, this concept of, the, of, of star seed or cosmic seeding, there's some incredible writing about it. Like there's an evolutionary biologist called Lyle Watson. He wrote the book Supernature and also a second book, Lifetide, 
where he's trying to get at what I tried to get at in some of my work because it's very mysterious. It's a, we live in a great mystery. It's very a very yeah. magical world to live in. And, um, you know, to try and belittle that mystery is, is very callous and ag- arrogant. But um, what he's doing is, is, is alluding to the fact that uh, the only place new material on this planet comes to this planet is from space, and it comes from other places. So we have cosmic dust and stardust and meteors and meteorites landing all the time, and every one of them contains new material from elsewhere. And the entire planetary bi- biosphere, which is soul, that so it's soul. The, there's no void on this planet. Okay, it, it's soul. That's S O L E. There's a single planetary entity. There's no void between you and me. There's just lots of air and some structures, you know. But we're all in, completely enmeshed within the planetary soul in that respect. Um, and I mean that in a singular form, S O L E. So, um, uh, what's happening is the planetary bio- biosphere absorbs that new material and 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 it learns and it integrates and it interfaces what what is learned. And in the experiences I had, um, what I saw was that the the manifestation and ice age cycles of the planet were like wake and sleep cycles of it dreaming forth more complex formed out of its own substance. So Lyle Watson gets at this in his book Life Tide, where he talks about how after one of the early ice ages, so pre the first ice age, it was simply single-celled organisms. Then, out, out at the back of that, we had, you know, the, the, the movement towards multi-celled organisms, but disorganized within. So you have things like slugs and snails and scorpions and insects, where um, the outside is ordered, but the inside seems to be this disorganized goo substance. You know, it's just disorganized squidge. Um, but then uh, after the later mm. sleep cycle, i.e. ice age, then we had the awakening of, awakening of organs, which is about organization, you know. So the organs formed where the, the internal framework was able to org- organize itself. And then, 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 then we had the birth of the invertebrates, which was even more complex. And then we had the mammals, and each time it was about the planet dreaming forth a much more complex refinement of its own substance based on, seemingly, material and information received from elsewhere, but at a physical level. And, and more, you know, the physical is merely a representation of what's happening on many levels. But um, the point being there that in terms of the role of humanity in that respect is um, about understanding that what we're going through is, is um, kind of what the Ezekiel writers would call harmony through conflict, which is a known issue of the writhings that take place in these fragile forms as cosmic forces move through them. And as we, the indweller, wrestle to, to kind of mitigate the filtration that we're that we are we are duty bound to kind of um um uh, navigate which is you know the the full flush of consciousness flush of self-awareness the, the the movement of powerful forces like you know rage and reactivity and sexual lust and 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 desire and all of these and we have this this delicate form that just writhes and responds to these things and seems to drive us forth into actions that we later feel ashamed of or whatever and it's just this wrestling for dexterity in each of those those areas and um, you know I, I, that my, my sense is that this is that this is the process and this is why you can have things like prophecy or you can have things like foretellings it's because um there's like known issues with these blueprints and, and the specific thing about the human blueprint is that it is um it is the first form on this planet that we know of anyway that can manifest divine self-awareness and that in itself carries with it so many burdens. You know, there's so many burdens of self-consciousness associated with that. Yeah. Before I, we go to um, people's public trust, I, I want to ask you about uh, numbers. I saw that uh, in your uh, Skype name you have the 13. What do you think about uh, 13 already, the number 13? What do I think about it? I, I love that number. It is my it's my number. It's a it's a number that just is throughout my life from birth date to juice side is to, to repeating itself all over the place. Um so yeah, I mean thirteen works for me basically. But yeah, people's people's public trust, that's a bit of a leap from what we were chatting about, isn't it? <laughs> um I kinda missed that there. I got I got interrupted by somebody chatting to me there. So what we, what was it you were asking me about thirteen in relation to other things? I uh, didn't get that, sorry. Can sorry, I'm just saying that. I got, yeah, yeah, I got interrupted by somebody just chatting to me there for a moment. Um, so what were you what were you asking? Because I, I heard you mention people's public trust and then something about 13, but I didn't get the relationship between the two. 
No, that was just before we going to people's public trust. <laughs> the question came. Uh, Bob want to ask something. Oh, yeah. Just uh, Bob, come on. Yeah, look, it was the number 13. Uh, I heard you speaking yeah. about, about the bodies and so forth. And um, okay. our yeah. numbers, you answered on 13 minutes past the hour, bang on. Um, they, yeah. they, they were 13 on, on the live stream. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we were 1.3, one thirty minutes into um, the second um, part of the overrun when you answered. Uh, the little samples we have running. Uh, and since yeah. you've been talking, our numbers have gone up and returned to 13. They've gone up and returned to 13. Wow. Um, it was feeling, I was getting a little bit odd. And you started yeah. speaking of the bodies, <laughs> one, two, and you kind of went yeah. three, touched yeah. on it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, there are I more, just, absolutely. Yeah, yeah well, I'm, I'm aware of that. I, I just kind of thought yeah. you may be, and I might mention that synchronicity. Please continue. Yeah. Well, I think, well, 13 is, is the magic number for humanity. It's apparently and allegedly, this turns up from numerous, numerous authors and also in tradition as well, is that the number 13 for some reason is massively significant for all of us. So, um, and I don't know why. I, I, I do not know why. I don't know, I don't know that whether that's because that is the number of bodies or whether that is the number of strings and dimensional string theory because that's one of the, one of the positive numbers. It's also the, um, the 12 jurors and the judge. It's also the 12 disciples and the Christ. It's, it's, it turns up throughout the, throughout the place that 13 is a significant number for us, and I'm not entirely sure why. Some of the, like an incredible author that I know, V. Van Dam, he uh, writes in a great book called Starcraft, which is about working with nature energies. He writes in there that the ideal working number but it's 13 but he doesn't suggest as to why um, but I know that it's just it's a number that I have strong associations with but I'm not entirely sure why <laughs> so it looks like if it's turning up in this in this call repeatedly it's maybe we've, this is the foundation this is the anchor the anchor is 13 <laughs> <laughs> that's good so um, tell us more about uh, people's public trust like I, uh, when I hear uh, after your speech you, you mention uh, people's public trust I was like oh, what he don't talk with uh, like the OPPT people that I uh, oh. investigate for uh, two months. And can you tell us more uh, first uh, how um, that uh, people's public trust is not the same than one people's public trust? And how well, and yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, the one people's public trust are people who still owe my name. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to them over a year ago when they were Public Trust 1776 and they still have that website. But the, problem, the thing was, because I, I, I formed the People's Public Trust beforehand, they were, um, all, the, all the website hits around the world for Public Trust or People's Trust or whatever, but it's my website that comes up first. <laughs> That's good. Um, and the thing is as well, it's, it's about, it's about the, the power of the spell. And the point was, the, 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 the rationale behind the People's Public Trust and the whole reason for it, what it was that it was it was a demonstration of uh, the application of the spelling work that I tried to teach. It was meant to be nothing more than that. So I dipped mm -hmm. into the sovereign and Freeman movement to basically say, "What well, you're wrestling with this, that, and the other? Both, both, both. Here's here's the language for that. Here's the language for that. Here's the language for that. It's already there. You don't need to reinvent it. You don't need to wrestle with these concepts." And that was when I, I became known for the, doing work with the master title. So you know about mass, about um, Mr. Mrs. and Miss, and I really. Yeah, if you're going to use a title, it should be the title Master. It's our constitutional title in this country. I know a lot of people have continued to research beyond that and seem to think it's burdened with all sorts of stuff. But I still don't think it is. I think it's the simplest title to use in relation to enforcing our power in relation to public servants and in, in state agents. Um, also, the work in relation to the collar, the cuff and the tie. So the fact that men have to go to the places that you and I can't go unless we're collared and cuffed. I think this is a massively significant symbology that is not conspiratorial in any way because it's naming what's already there and saying, hey, can we just discuss this? Why is it that I have to wear things called a collar and cuffs to come in here? You know, what is going on with that? And why is it that we live in a graded collar system with blue collar and white collar and dog collar? And why are all the police known by their collar number? These are symbols which if we made them made of metal, it would be very clear. Um, and the people's public trust was um so that was about you know concepts like that that people had struggled to express the people's public trust was about expressing 
um, the mechanism for acting upon public servants that were hiding behind limited liability and uh, hiding behind corporate faces, which is um, by recognising that there is a trust placed in all public servants prior to signing any contract, so prior to, any, to inheriting any statutory do obligation, there's trust created and trust legislation underpins the statutory legislation, except in trust, there is no limited liability. The people can't hide behind the, 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 the insurance policy of the company. They're personally liable. And uh, the OPPT did not grasp that whatsoever, but they loved the power of the spell because it resonated with them. It was like, yeah, the people's public trust, yeah, blah, 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 because they knew it worked. It's a, it's a, it's a powerful spell um, because it's not about creating something. It's about naming what's already there. You know, the people already have a public trust in their public servants. Most of the issues that they have regarding to corporatism and big pharma and, and um, you know, people poisoning their food and telling their wives that they're fat and ugly unless they buy these products or, or telling their kids that they're, they're inadequate unless they buy this product or do this action. If we had representatives who did their job and monitored the, the, the quality of the uh, merchants that came to work in this country, be they uh, from within or, or international, if they were doing their job properly and uh, looking after the well-being of the people, which is what the, what the point of the trust is, you know, the trust is, that they the, don't the, the trust in public service with having the well-being of the community, the well-being and safety of the community is having their, as being their priority, that's what the trust is. So if public service are behaving in a way which is contrary to that, then they failed in their duty. You know, they've absolutely failed. And a lot of the problems, like I mentioned about the big pharma and the banking and the, and the blah, 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 poison, people poisoning food and stuff like that, if the representatives did their job, we wouldn't have to worry about any of that. We wouldn't mm -hmm. yeah, have to worry but, about, uh, about, about the doctors coming in. Yeah. You, you say trust, uh, and uh, one of your interviews also, you, you, you say... Um, that trust is very important. I, I think the people lose trust today. And uh, um, how how do you um, put put these two things together? Because uh, p people lose their trust and they don't don't really trust that they they represent us anymore. Well, exactly. Yeah. And so the point then is that there's actually a door to the legislation there. You can actually go and take cases for breach of trust. You know, breach of trust is a valid charge, but you do need to have it evidenced. I've said publicly that I would take. Um, representative action, which is basically large group action against either elected members or elected officials or or, or police staff or whatever who were guilty of, of breach of trust, of which there's lots of them, if enough people sign up to back the action. And the fact is not enough people have signed up. Because for me, if a few thousand people sign, that's not representative. There's 60 million people in this country how is it a credible argument that somebody is guilty of breach of trust if only 3,000 of us are willing to say something about it? It's like that is not representative and it's not actually representative of how people really feel. And for me, it's like people, people have to be willing to put their feet where their belief is, you know. Mm. And it's, it's, it, and there's still not enough of that. There's just not enough. And um, it then means it's not, it's not credible, you know. It just becomes... Uh, uh, this 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 pocketized kind of um, movement or faction or cult or whatever it gets called by the mainstream because it's not accessible enough. And for me, the, the point of the People's Public Trust is it's mainstream accessible. It uses all the language of the mainstream. It doesn't reinvent anything. There's no legal learning required. There's just a basic introduction. It's it's totally accessible in that in that in that respect. But for me. Um, there wasn't even enough support in the sovereign movement. I mean, don't get me wrong, I had loads of support and thousands of people, but mm. it just is not representative enough. And my problem is that I'm completely useless at organising stuff. And that basically to be bombarded with thousands of people to try to coordinate volunteers and structure and blah, 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 that was just, that just sent me into a spiral of, of despair and growing grey hairs, basically, because the whole point for me was just to give people a tool set so the, the, the point behind people's public trust is anybody can use it. You can go and print your own badge. Because what I used to do was I used to go into court with a badge and a clipboard saying I'm here from the people's public trust pursuing quality and excellence and, 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 and humanity and in, in, in service to the taxpayer because that's what the public service is for. 
And it was just about uh, getting people a more humane experience. And I had incredible mm. results in courts, in, in police stations and things like that, just by being an observer. And um, it, 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 was, it was invoking quantum mechanics. You know, I was just simply introducing the observer effect from a credible observer. Anybody can use that. Print yourself a badge, make it up for yourself. I'd love to create an organization. It's just, it's not my thing. But um, mm. it, it is there as a framework. The website's there for people to refer others to. Um, you know, peoplespublictrust.com. Um, it would be nice if there was a bit more money to pay to, that came into the donation box so, so we could pay an administrator to maybe start to manage the throughput of volunteers and things like that because it'd be really nice to train people and, and that's all stuff that could be in the pipeline. Line, but um, it requires just more of a, of a committed core of people, um, and, and it's just a difficult thing to pull together. One of the biggest problems with sovereignty consciousness is that people reserve their right to act on whimsy all the time, whereas what you have in business and in the corporate agenda is people that turn up at quarter to nine every day and they leave at quarter past five every day and they operate under the whip all day long. And you've got the freedom movement, which does stuff when it can be arsed. And, <laughs> you know, hmm. it's... it's uh, it's the, it's the curse of, of a sovereignty awakening, which is, you know, you get 200 people coming to a room and, they, you know, everyone's having tea break, but we've all got to wait an extra half hour because five, five out of the whatever are exercising their sovereign right to have a longer pint or to smoke another fag or to have another spliff or whatever. And uh, it's, it's, it's a, a real difficulty. And this is where people have demonized the concept of contract without realizing that it's actually about to contract and it's where, well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to contract my sovereignty for the moment. I'm going to put my sense of humor aside. I'm going to put my sovereign right to smoke and drink aside. I'm going to put my sovereign right to this, that, and the other aside so that we can actually get something done. Mm. And actually, by us all agreeing to contract the fullness of our wholeness, to focus on this one thing, means we might actually get something done. But because the sovereign and free man movement have demonized the concept of contract, they refuse to get into proper arrangements with each other. And I've been in uh, quite. A, I've been in a situation at Bodmin Manor over the last year, which has been incredible, because um, the trust between people has been put to the test. Because it really is about trust. Everything, all community is founded on trust. And mm -hmm. there's uh, what we're talking about in relation to public servants is the public trust. But what we have with each other is private trust. And what's amazing is where private trust between people fails because it's not well enough defined. And people make trust too broad a thing. Whereas really, it's like people say, oh, yeah, I trust you. I trust you. He's a good guy. And it's like, yeah, well, you might trust him to go out on a protest with, but would you trust your kids with him? You know, and I don't mean that in a bad sense. I mean that just in the sense of, you know, if, you, if you've got two kids that you want to babysit for a couple of hours, would you trust him with that? Would you mm. trust him with, uh, you know, going and doing your shopping for you to pick the right things? So people use the trust too casually. They use it too absolutely. It's like, well, actually, we only trust each other for certain things. And we need to get a measure of that. And we need to get better at clarifying exactly what we're looking for from each other in our uh, either activist frameworks or our social frameworks or whatever. Because my experience is that the people, the reason the entire movement is failing, and I think it is, is because of trust in each other. And um, mm. the, the whole the whole conspiracy matrix around Bilderberg and all this sort of stuff where people are being judged as being MI5 or feds or shills just because they're achieving stuff by people who aren't achieving stuff usually is just such a sad measure of how low the trust has become. When they say, well actually have you checked that person out? Have you been with them? Have you spent time with them? How can you know whether you can trust them unless you as a human being exactly. have spent time? You know, it's such a, it's such a convoluted yeah. Think. Yeah. Um, so what, what, yeah, I, what I see is um, that uh, people um, basically don't trust people they don't know. Uh, that is very uh, f for me. That is very strange. Uh, I, I grew up like in, in a big community, uh, a private school, uh, but this was more a community than a, uh, when I really went out to the to, to the, in the system, uh, how we can call it. Uh, I, I was very surprised because the people don't trust, and that is is feed yeah. so much uh, we be uh, uh, mistrust. Uh, and I, I always I always start to trust people before before I mistrust, you know. And even I, yeah, I exactly. think uh, 
we are compromised also through the system, through the family, through the school, to all the, the, the different stuff that makes like uh, people really mistrust uh, to, to each other. And uh, that, that is, I think that is a fundamental, um, at least in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the first world and in the Western world, that is a, is a big problem. In, when I travel to uh, also Middle East or Africa, also the, you, more simple the people get, more, more trust they have also uh, to each other. Exactly, exactly. I had a friend just last night talking about when she was in Africa and on the bus, she was saying that nobody, nobody, nobody spoke. Okay, it was just so machinated, but you'd have people jumping on with all these kids and they just put other people's children on people's knees and nobody would say anything. The child wouldn't say anything to the, to the person whose knee they were on. The person whose knee they were on wouldn't say anything to them. And the child would just ride on the person's knee and then get off at the stop that they were with and go off with the adult they came on with. But the, 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 the basic community trust was there. You know, it didn't need to be discussed. Whereas the whole divide and conquer methodology has been executed so well um, here in the West that the very, uh, the very stuff we're talking about, the very distrust that we're talking about here is, is a, a testimony to its effectiveness, you know, absolute testimony. And it goes right back to the, you know, the, the, the times of the Spanish Inquisition and the, 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 the church's belief of, uh, or, or the church's practice of getting everybody to look at the neighbours to see if they're sinning. It began then sort of thing, if not before. And then we just had a breakdown in community off the back of this ever-increasing distrust and demonization of each other. Um, and, and, you know, truly is a case of divided we fall in this respect. It really is. Is uh, um, division, creating division, is also, uh, yeah. like Lee is, is uh, posting a uh, sport. Sport is, is, is one of the most... Uh, Divider uh, promotion, uh, like like uh, to all my uh, football friends, I say uh, football is the first cause of of racism in the world. You have uh, yeah. Yeah. people in each country, in e even from city to city, they they hit on each other because of of only uh, football uh, or the whole creating concurrence. Like uh, is even in the school, we have um, the notes to 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 uh, to judge what what you did right or not. Yeah. That is, uh, and is, is very uh, largely promoted. So it's, it's like uh, to come back to the trust. I think that is definitely um, is definitely well, a, you know, a key point. Yeah. What I've kind of realised on trust now is that actually it goes back another layer. And the reason people can't trust each other is because they don't actually trust themselves. Mm. And they don't trust because we have let ourselves down so many times in our aspirations or. Or in our goals, that that it cultivates a trust, a distrust of certain aspects of self that then cannot help but mirrored in the world. But we start to, to to struggle to trust each other for certain things, and um, especially for the kind of deep and powerful connections that we need to have with each other to move forward as a species. You know, we need to be connecting much more deeply, much more authentically, and much more honestly. You know, at a level of really owning our own crap and really owning where we're at emotionally and and mentally, and uh, the 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 kind of the ongoing uh, repetition of information to mask where we're actually at emotionally and mentally, I think is, is, is preventing proper authentic action um, that I think is deeply needed to, to deal with some of the issues that, that, that we're up against here. It comes back to the spelling, actually. So, I mean, before I head off, I'm going to have to head off shortly, but, um, the, 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 you know, right, to take us right back to the whole spelling your story thing. I, you know, when I do a spelling event, I like to get people to think back to times in the, in the, in the playground at school or, mm. or at home in the family or, or in a relationship where somebody said something that, that really hurt, you know, something really hurt. And to then look at how that made you physically feel. I mean, what happened to your body when somebody said that, you know, it didn't, you didn't breathe in and expand with warmth and joy. You know, nobody does to that when something really offends and hurtful happens. You know, it's kind of like we contract and we withdraw and we try and make ourselves smaller because of the impact of this. And if you then ask it again, ask people to say, well, you know, how do you, how do you treat yourself in your uh, head after that? What do you say about yourself? What do you say about other people? And how do you, how do you treat them? That, that is the power of the spell. You know, you can have people who think badly of themselves and treat themselves less than they should. Mm. 
for years, decades, as a result of just a few words said on the playground or by mum or dad. And that is crippling. And to see that happen in everybody's life that I know, there's nobody I know that's free of this. You know, there isn't. And I know there's lots of people who say, I'm not affected. It's like, you know, it just means that most people are, are ignorant to the truth of their emotional depths, I think, in that respect. Because um, if there was a single human being on this planet that fully stood in the authority of the substance of of their divine presence, every one of us would know about it. You know, we would absolutely know about it because it would be an incredible yeah. entity of presence. You know, it really would. Because, uh, you know, to, to that, that's what it is to truly release the shackles of, of um, the misspelling of humanity where we've spelled our own fallibility. We've kind of spelled our own description of our, of our not fitting or our unworthiness or our, the scale of the capacity of our action. We've spelled all this to ourselves as a result of all these other spells that have affected us. All of those accumulated from those in the home to those in the playground to those in the relationships, they've all cascaded on top of each other to create a position of, you know, our frantic efforts to be positive and to give positive affirmation and positive yeah. commentary about ourselves. But against the background I, of a subconscious repetition. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. I, I talked uh, two weeks ago about uh, trauma based uh, society, and that is exactly what you yeah. said. It is, Absolutely. it comes from, Probably. from, from little traumas. It's like, yeah. uh, even, uh, I don't know how, how it is in England, but here, uh, or, or more south, uh, the, the people, uh, the kids just get spanked all the time. And uh, even here in Switzerland, it's not even forbidden by law that the parents can uh, spank uh, their the, the kids for uh, educational uh, correction or, or how they call it. And uh, all these little traumas, I think it makes a lot to, 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 to our, uh, our society. And we are the only one who can break this chain. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We're the only ones that can undo those spells by refinding a sense of value and where we are and by undoing all of them every single one every one that impacts us and that's why it's it, it you know it's it, it that process wasn't built in a day it took a it took a, it took a lifetime to build it's going to take mm -hmm. a time to undo it and i think there's just not enough respect for um, the challenges we face with ourselves, you know, respect for the process, you know, people, it's like, it's like EFT, people seem to think that you just tap yourself in a couple of places and then it's magically gone. Okay, maybe yeah. it is. But I think in, in reality, there's, and in my experience anyway, that that may just help release the momentary tension in a moment. But in terms of real lasting issues of value and worth, uh, I, I see again, just a bit of a rise of a false positive. And uh, what, this is why I've been kind of quiet over the, last year or so is because I'm deeply seeking to create spaces and events that that um, allow us to be more evocative of our truth, you know, and mm -hmm. to, to be where we're at and how we really feel so that we can move through it together and develop a strength of expression of our anger and our discontent and our shame and our blame and all these things so that instead of them working against us, they can work for us. You know, and I, I really, I really think that until we get a handle on that, we, we, we're not going to be able to deal with the global issues because we can't even deal with our own feeling effectively. Mm. And I think there's a right order to this. I think that order is it. I mean, um, just to tie that into the, to the People's Public Trust again, is like for people who are looking to act, the People's Public Trust is a, is a tool of a spell that people can use to temporarily uh, veil the fact that they're operating by themselves in a way, but... You know, they can start to speak from the whole, but it's, it's a doorway to, to spell a new sense of empowerment for themselves. Mm. You know, so they're there saying, well, actually, I'm here, I'm here as, as, as people's public trust, but to express my personal feelings of broken trust, my personal feelings of discontentment, my personal feelings of of you speaking in an inhumane fashion or treating this other person in an inhumane fashion. And if we can be as human as we actually are about that, I've, I've seen magic happen because if we come from our human truth, it, others respond and resonate to it. They really do. And I know there's so many people who scoff at that, but it's generally people who haven't actually tried it or when they have, it's not really been how they feel. It's been like, you know, a rant or something like that. And it's like, no, that's not how you really feel. Get into how you feel. Get into your sadness. Get into your fear. Get into your mm -hmm. vulnerability. And if you speak to people from that place, my goodness, and mountains can move. I've really seen it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, bro. Um, uh, we let you go. I know that you had yeah. to, to travel a, a little bit far to get any uh, uh, connection. I hope uh, we, we will bring you back on the the radio once uh, anytime you are ready or if you wish to pass a word or something 
Thank you so much for being on the Dark City tonight. And uh, well, I hope... Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank no, you so much. Yeah. Honestly, Just it's go been ahead. a real pleasure. It's been a real pleasure. I, I wish I, uh, I could have spent a bit longer with you too, because I feel like we ended up going quite a bit into some of the esoteric stuff without mm. infilling with a bit more on spelling and whatnot. But I hope folk got stuff of value <laughs> out of that. Oh, and I really very, think sometimes... Yeah? Very good. I, I really love it. Yeah. Uh, it was, was very yeah. good information. And uh, it's... it's, it's, it's good to see the, the 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 things from a from a different point also also like it's it's not a it's not a talk of dividing again and that uh, i i really appreciate that thank you so much oh yeah no absolute pleasure i think we've got to, we've got to find a language for this now don't we we've got to find a language for for inclusion but still to still honoring our deep feelings you know and honoring the anger and honoring the the rest of it and there is a place it does all it does all fit together. We just have to find the right perspectives that make that happen. This, this is possible. Um, but right. it's, it, again, it's about, it's about trust. It's about trusting the fact that we're in a process and as, as a species and individually and not to judge it by the temporary snapshots. You know, so what is the true snapshot of the human process? Is it 3,000 people at Bill about doing an OM or is it the police pinning somebody to the ground? Is it the tear gas in Turkey? You know, what is the true snapshot of humanity? And it's like, well, if we formed a conclusion of each of them individually, we'd be wrong. You know, mm -hmm. but if we could actually see the fact that they're all snapshots of something much bigger, then we're in a chance of, of realizing that we're, we're not the storyteller, we're, we're part of the story. You know, and there's a real liberation in that to realize, wait a minute, it's not, it's not, it's not just our story. You know, we, we, the, there's other stories being told here. We're all part. Yeah of a much larger story and then uh, it's 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 uh, yeah i think i think i think we're on the way to new york times but i, I do think we've got a lot of the uh, challenges of honesty and ahead and a real cultivation yeah i think uh, we lost the uh, darren to our but, uh, uh, we we just lost you for uh, and, and, yeah, ten that's, seconds. That's, that's, that's what we can do in my next event. So if people want to keep in to the, I'll, I'll let you know if I'm putting something on. I'm hoping to, to plan some stuff in the next few months, but it's going to be more of that ilk, which is about you know, can we evoke the substance of our own presence? Can we actually bring the substance of our authority here without being it, it being so kind of collared and cuffed, you know, and so and so and so kind of veiled by frameworks that aren't ours you know a, a powerful dispelling is needed and, and i certainly am up for trying to help uh, bring that about in, in in the event in the future that's for sure so i'd be uh <laughs> i'd be well up for coming back on again if you wanted to do a bit more on maybe some spelling oh, yeah. work or something else sound related or or whatever else actually if anybody listens to this and has any ideas of what they'd like to hear i'd be quite happy to come on and chat about anything else we will do uh, with pleasure another show. Uh, Bob, to say uh, you can come on uh, every night yeah, if you yeah. wish. <laughs> and um, but we let you go now. The connection is not Hello? very good. I don't know if it's my connection or if it's uh, your connection. I also have a very bad uh, internet. But uh, we're gonna play a song, and uh, we just will uh, continue to discuss. Uh, some more minutes in uh, a couple of minutes um, Bob going to play a song but thank you Darren if you are still here after and if not we're going to talk very soon thank you so much
increases The world has a word stress This is what you're facing Face it, embracing Mixing all our graces Shifting all our forces The new world all are trotting on its courses hey. No one can look so far No one can pretend the future Still no one step on Mars All right, we are back on air after a very amazing show with Darren and uh, talking about um, 
spells spell of your story and uh, the one we are the only one uh, who, who, who can change it um, uh, BJ Lee and uh, Bob was supposed to, to talk but uh, Darren uh, <laughs> says so much amazing things that uh, we, we all went quiet um, what do you think uh, Lee what uh, did did you did you get some more information to tonight? Yeah, it's just that's the thing about Darren's videos. Now, obviously, I've only I've never seen him in a um, live. I've only seen recordings of him doing um, talks and stuff. And you kind of like, something he says resonates with you. And you kind of like, yeah, I'm going to look into that. And it really rings true, and blah blah blah. And then you think, right, I'll check another video out. And he talks, and you learn something more. And it goes a bit deeper, and a little mm -hmm. bit deeper, but just slowly digging away at the surface for you, so you can slowly start understanding the deeper realms of what what we are and what we think, how our brains work. You know, he's a true, mm -hmm. incredible philosopher, the guy. Uh, incredible. Uh, also about the, the the trust, I think that is uh, definitely a a, a big. Uh, uh, subject. I, I see also, like in the so-called uh, truth movement, that uh, a lot of people they just they just mess around with with other truth movers, and uh, instead to to come together and find out what. Uh, um, I, I think in that, like like Darren said, the whole life is 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 a huge mystery, and we 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 have to go find out what what is really uh, what it is really all about, and I think that the only way to get there is to 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 leave, let go the old, and uh, even if we come on on certain ideas how it could function, we we have to be able to 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 let go again and uh, to uh, like like we say, it's, it's like the onion, huh? yeah. <laughs> keep peeling away, keep peeling away, and uh, if you think you are in the center, uh, you still have uh, a couple of uh, layers to take away. But uh, finally, we come to simple things, and that is also what I, what I see with the kids. They are, they, are, they are the pure nature, and if you ask them what is really important is uh, to have fun, uh, to, to, <laughs> to, yeah, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not the things that uh, you hear uh, from uh, uh, traumatized um, adults, <laughs> if you can say. Um, Therefore, I think the the whole trust is also uh, is also about the, the again we coming back to the spelling also when the people uh, they um, I, I see uh, a, a lot of people uh, even if 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 my English is is not top uh, or my French is not top or even my German I think I cannot even write correctly in any language, but um, for me it was never a problem I could I could talk to anybody and uh, because I trust because I trust the people and uh, if 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 you have to express something, I think there is the, definitely the language barrier is is one of the first that people don't um, trust anymore in in other people. Or he he talks strange, or uh, um, he, even the Arab language, or the Chinese, or Japanese, just like is so far away that uh, creates the uh, as another separation. And that is the, the whole Babylonian idea of of uh, separating and. And um, getting control over over uh, if the people are lost if they if they lose the trust in their self they have uh, no way to to trust anybody else and that is that is so true and uh, of course as we talk a lot is is the system or the the the, the society or the neighbors or so on uh, they they are all in that paradigm of of uh, not not trusting anybody else. And uh, but again, if somebody don't trust anybody else, it's because they don't trust uh, themselves. themselves. Yeah, definitely. Also, is uh, creating uh, competition. Yeah, to be uh, to be com competitive also leads you to mistrust each other, mm. and they start that at a very early age with the child. You know, through their education system, through the kindergarten. You know, you start to lose that trust from a very, very early age. And once it gets impregnated inside you, you can't trust yourself. Mm. And that's when they take total control over you. It's a great deception. It really is. What do you think, Bob? 
Um, not a lot, really, Jabba. Uh, I kind of give up thinking a while back. Um, you I, still I, focus on the numbers? <laughs> um, no, no, no. I've, I've. Uh, well, it's even got weirder now when you start looking at numerology, the jumps. It, it, it's just odd. I, 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 well, just looking at that, I think if you focus onto something, um, then you start to see whatever it is you were looking for um, in one way or another. So, yeah, I think the focus of, um, of attention and, and where we put his energies, and, uh, and, and Darren, was, I think, was bang on with that. Mm. I know he looks at it in a different way. Uh, a technique I, I worked on a while ago, uh, a self-mastery technique, it involves um, four stages of, of three, uh, which is 12, and then a final 13th stage uh, of self-mastery. Uh, and he said about the name Master, uh, and it was just like click, 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 click. He was explaining something um, from another angle. Uh, it's almost the same thing. Uh, and the thing about specifically the technique I used, anyway, I can't speak of any others, um, it, it, it teaches you to look at it uh, and not do it the way you were taught. Um, do it your way. Um, see it from your angle um, rather from the angle of the master, someone, you know, the teacher or you know, even a, a grandmaster, a guru, or a god, you know, look at it from your way. You know, you are part of whatever it is, and you're vi a vital part of it, and you wouldn't be here otherwise. Every part of it is vital. Um, so, you know, it, often we can, as Lee mentioned, you know, you, get, you can get ingrained, and we lose, oh, excuse me, as, uh, um, oh, God, it's JB. JB. Yeah. BJ. BJ, BJ, <laughs> BJ. God, I never get it right. Um, uh, as BJ said about it, be getting ingrained. Um, mm. uh, 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 again, it, it's about, I, I think, comprehending or, or even understanding, you know, Jabba, or overstanding, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Getting a grasp on, on the facts that the, the, these things we have done which we're not proud of you know the things we do feel guilty about and we're ashamed of that we were coerced into those positions we were coerced into them we've really got to forgive ourselves we really have if we are going to have a focus of intention that is is truly going to bring forth you know self mastery or or you know this utopian society or utopian world if we are going to do that uh, if that does exist and, and I truly think it's here already that and you know at least a world of abundance I don't think we're short of anything uh, I don't think we really are we're often led into a believing yeah yeah, yeah. a situation yeah. where we think we've got to have something and the summit we're lacking in something yeah perhaps we are lacking in forgiveness of ourselves yeah. you know Perhaps we are. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not qualified to, you know, to, to to say that. I mean, I'm not, especially for anyone else. Um, so yeah, I learnt a lot. I I learnt a lot from Darren there. Uh, really <laughs> quick, it triggered a lot in me. I, I I'll admit that. Uh, it's been a while since we've had. Uh, well, that was the shotgun, wasn't it? That was it's like the peppered yeah, shotgun it. effect, wasn't it? <laughs> no. we, we just all went silent, you know. <laughs> I, I don't think, I mean, as many people know, um, text is, is probably one of my weakest points. And, and I had a little text run, actually. <laughs> and and it, it was, it was really good, um, really good stuff. So but uh, like, like Lee is saying, he's, he's, he's a real philosopher. Yeah. And the real is, is I think, uh, is, is, is very important in what I, what I just say, because uh, uh, philosophy also gets hijacked. You know? yeah. it's, it's, uh, I know, I know, I say that also to, uh, it's, it's like the music, you know, there is, is uh, real musicians and there are is, uh, musicians. And uh, what the definition is for a real musician that is, uh, yeah. so I think uh, first when he do it for himself and uh, 
They said uh, we could not do it. Uh, as soon as he had they fun with it, it so uh, other people will get we did it. Uh, we'll have fun with it. We created a free radio station to bring the people yeah. together and spread an alternative message from the mainstream. They the crushed the silence, us. Yeah. They the tried to hack us, but we carried on. You mm. cannot silence the truth. Well, you cannot play freedom. Just you cannot stop the good idea. Yeah. Uh, you are you not already you not. Cannot stop you are already nobody. The crew is now bigger and stronger yeah, than ever yeah, before. We will not be kept off the airwaves. We will continue. This is not our radio. This is your radio. This is Dark City Radio. Because it's a valid point. I love to use it. Dark City. This is your 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 Dark City Radio. All have specific meanings in the realm. Uh, Lee, what did, did you use the, uh, like and study the Peace Public the Trust? Dark City. Darren's thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I looked into it like, a while back when he first set it up and I couldn't really understand why it didn't take off because it is a bit of a perfect solution. And if it's set up as a look, the People's Public Trust is, as I see it, or it, it's there, we've given them the trust. Darren explained that earlier that it's an uh -huh. entity that we've given to them. And all it takes really is for a loose, loosely for somebody to realise that if they're going into the job centre to deal with a public servant, they should be able to take in an entity, a third party, to witness the behaviour of the public servant. Now, that could be a best friend of theirs under the hat wearing the title of a People Public Trust member. And he'll fill out reports, and if the public servant acts outside of office, raises voices, be, is difficult, unreasonably difficult for no apparent reason, then there's, there is a claim for out of office. But when there's a huge group of people all said, I've signed up to the People's Public Trust, that you can use my name to do um, class suits against one man in, I don't know, let's say Ashton um, Council, because he was rude, We'll do that class, and all those people will do the com complaint together as the People's Public Trust. You know, it's not a difficult concept. It's just the, the people willing to understand it, what it's really about. There's no hierarchy, hierarchy of it at all, really, except for maybe mm -hmm. there is a group of people on the website coordinating calls for volunteers and things like that where people haven't got friends that are clued up. Obviously, a little bit of an education on how you should behave, what questions you should ask, what the public servants are allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. Now, that obviously takes a little bit of diligence on the volunteers' behalf because they're going to start having to read rules and regulations of somebody else's job. You know, it's, but and then... Like, like you say, it is... Um, like you say, it probably work uh, worldwide, what uh, Darren is uh, talking about in the public trust. I... I definitely will will study it. <laughs> I uh, I didn't make my homework before uh, today, uh, but I definitely will will, will study it. Um, um, also, in a way that uh, he, he when when I saw the one of the the videos he talk about the public trust, he talk about the importance of the trust, and. Uh, for me, it was like, yeah, but uh, people don't have trust, and I, I don't trust in in uh, in governments too. And that is exactly the issue. That is my trauma to say that uh, um, uh, why we lose the trust of of uh, of governments uh, instead to to uh, expose it. Uh, we should show them where the trust should be, and they, uh, that they also take their own responsibility. That if they want to be a public servant, that they should. Uh, Act on the um, uh, public's trust. As uh, simple as that. It's like uh, also we're going to talk with um, uh, Danny Shine next week. And uh, for me, it's also uh, for, for, for myself, it changed a, a lot how I saw uh, how, how Danny is. Um, uh, I, I, he he called himself um, um, spiritual entertainment. 
And I, I would say he's a spiritual educator <laughs> for a policeman <laughs> or for a public servant <laughs> or even for people in, uh, for even mothers uh, that are going to McDonald's and try to make happy their kids. Uh, he just asks them uh, uh, how, how long <laughs> it really holds the happiness of the kids when they come out of the McDonald's and they, they admit it, it don't hold very long, you know. So uh, all these kind of things that make uh, people aware, but in in um i see that a lot of a lot of um people who de debunk the the system or the the in the truth movement they put finger on 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 people because they are public servant and they uh, don't spread the trust they should but that is exactly the point we have to we have to separate them from uh, fr from their uh, official uh uh, activity in a way and take them as human and talk uh, only in a, in a human kind to them. And that is, uh, that is also like Darini said. And then you, as soon as you're going to mention them as uh, sheeple, uh, I definitely stopped that uh, too since a while because, uh, it, it is just put another, other spell on, uh, on, on people. And that is creating a, a exactly against a, a separation, a difference between something. And this is all about this separation that uh, that we are living in, and even create more unconsciously. And as soon as, but as soon as we know it, it is it is consciously. So there, there we really have to. Um, uh, that is the place where we can act and definitely yeah, break fully, the chain. Yes, fully understand the power of the words mm. that we use on a daily basis. Only uh, speak. Speech yeah, but again, you know? but like again, like Darren, he say it is like it is not very important uh, in, in daily basis uh, of what kind of spell we use. Mm. That is the kind of communication we have. It is as soon as it get important. So uh, if we come to the law or something, uh, there we have to, um, to be very careful. Yeah. There we have to be very careful what kind of of uh, of, of terms and words and spells uh, we use or not, and. Uh, for that, you have to know what what kind of uh, uh, what the meaning, the real meaning of the words are. Like uh, um, the person who writes, exactly. and he knows the intention of the words. You know, until you speak with him directly, you don't know what context the words are written in. You know, so it's. Uh, but don't don't you think as well? It's about how you choose to receive that spell that's been cast upon you. you know, send it back. It, it, yeah, it's exactly that. If you, you think about bullying, the basic things you say, kids are 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 the natural thing when they're young and they they're doing the toddlers are bullying one another or whatever. If somebody doesn't, if something doesn't happen with the reaction of a toddler, what does it do? You know, do you get what I mean? Yeah. It, it gets angrier. It gets more. It, it feels more work, more inside itself because the, the the spell that it cast or tried to cast didn't have the response. Exactly the same as if a policeman gives you an order and you laugh at him and just say, come on, mate, you're not going to laugh with that one, ain't you? Yeah. Mm. It's not the response that he's expecting to get from that spell. Exactly the same as if Merlin tried to do a, a make it rain spell or rain, whatever, and he went, jabba juba juba dabba in whatever language he does, and a rabbit popped up out of a hat. He'd, he'd get frustrated with himself. If that, if that makes sense, do you get what I mean? So it's how we how we yeah. re receive the words that are said to us that's yeah. the the key to it. Yeah, definitely, it makes sense. Um, uh, I just I just forget <laughs> I want to say something. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like if somebody's shouting at you and you remain calm, it they, yeah, it, it throws they them back footed. Them. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely it's also. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I want to say, if a policeman asks you something, he just asks you a question. <laughs> and that is like already one of the first things you ask him if he asks a question or if he gives an order, because yeah. uh, to, that the policeman can give you an order, uh, you, you, you have to, to done something that wrong. And uh, it's the same, like uh, when they always want to get you out of the car, but they just ask you the question if you cannot come out of the car. It's the same thing if you, and you all, if you just ask if it is a question or order, and uh, order, you always have, uh, have to justify it. Uh, that is uh, something else, but it is, is, is goes in the same in a way that he just asks you a question, try to make a, 
um, something effective, mm. and it, it is not. It is definitely not because anybody can you ask questions, and uh, to a question there is a yes or a no, oh, and yeah. it is, <laughs> that is your choice or your That's your uh, way you 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 go with it. But of course, the mo uh, most of the people they just want to go uh, no. as soon as possible away okay. from the policeman, or uh, they think they just can have uh, bigger problems and. Uh, Uh, that is exactly what what they play with, and uh, that is exactly what what makes that you cannot trust mm. them anymore. And that is also how they exactly know. Um, how to take control over you as well. Exactly. Um, But remember that as well. You got to take into consideration that the police are are trained to to have a authoritative voice they go to classes when they're in the training yeah. how to use that voice why would they bother to train them to use that voice if it wasn't a way of casting the spell in a stronger method you know it's all about word magic yeah it's definitely about the uh, word magic and uh, and Darren give a very good example of that today <laughs> uh, and it, it's, it's also how we apply it in, in our everyday life or kind of uh, choices we make and uh, it's to us to, to, to break the traumas and to, to get awakened uh, of, uh, of what, we are, what we are doing or how we are acting or, or what, what kind of choice we take uh, in our everyday life when it comes to the, to, to the system or authorities or, or, uh, or even like he said, the, the way we, uh, we don't trust two people in is because we don't trust in ourselves, and that is the mirror, mirror all the time, uh, re uh, responding uh, on something. But what I just want to say about the, the whole truth movement, I, I see that almost daily now. It is all about that uh, donation thing. It is like uh, as soon as you have a donation button on your website, you are control opposition. What kind of shit is that? Can uh, can somebody explain me that, Bob? No, he, he oh, don't want to. No, mind. I was here. Excuse me, I muted microphone. What was that jabber again, please? Excuse me. About donation. Anytime uh, uh, somebody come up with a donation button on his website because he spent his whole day to debunk and uh, the thing people, people start to say that this one is controlled opposition. Um. Yeah, because people, I don't, I don't know. I've got no idea at all. I didn't want a donate button. I never wanted to have a donate button. I thought if we can do it, we'll do it. Um, the our donate button has done hundred and twenty eight pounds in total in in what? I don't know if it's been there six months because we didn't want one. Well, personally, um, but it's not up to me. You know, it's not my radio, it's our radio, you know, it's your radio, that's that's the, the situation. Uh, and people said that we should allow, give people the opportunity to be able to donate if that's what they wanted to do. Um, so, yeah, we did. That's what we yeah, did. Yeah, but uh, I, Put it there. I, I think... And then, and then people complained that we had a donate button. The weird thing was, it was the same people that encouraged it that later complained that we had it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's catch> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think uh, I mean I mean if people uh, appreciate something and so on, I think uh we should uh, I in the school we had there was there was a uh, different um Different groups come to play in the school, and there, there was. Uh, you, you always had a donation, but uh, not a button. That was not. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just a collection that the people uh, give something, uh, how they appreciate the the show or not. And I think only in the music business, if the people would only rely on donation, I think we would have way better music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that is the thing, and uh, I personally, uh, I I, uh, I thought about donation buttons on, on my on my website, but for the moment, pers 
personally, I think I don't deliver enough uh, content to have a donation button on it. If if I would really spend my whole day to uh, instead to copy uh, any quotes from uh, from the Facebook to another, yeah. uh, but I would write real articles. Uh, it's like people who sell books, who sell the music, who sell anything else. But I think the donation button, in a way, it is. If we, if we would come back to donation, I think um, we would have way better content, music, uh, anything, uh, because you can have it even if you are, don't have the money. On the other side, I saw when when uh, the download of the music came and the people could download on uh, Napster and all that because uh, iTunes and all the Amazon uh, MP3 sales that didn't exist. We sold way more CDs mm. because the people could listen to the music and if they like it, they bought it. Mm. So way more people could listen for free to the music and if they liked, they, they bought the CD. They came to shows. Mm. And that is also what I said in the music business. If, uh, if, uh, if people would give free the music uh, to, to, to listen to the people and you only make money when you have a show. Mm. Maybe the show you would have to pay more entry because that would be the only money that uh, the musician could relate to. But at least it would be the equal work of, of the musician, of a band, uh, to, to, to make a, a living out of, of music. And therefore, I think uh, all the critic uh, uh, about the donation, I, I personally don't, don't really get it. Uh, first of all, and to say that if somebody have a donation button on their website or radio or uh, of course if 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 you uh, ask and 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 say, "Oh, the radio will stop if we don't have the donation or the website or my stop my work will stop then it's not a donation anymore then it's like uh, uh, another hijacked idea of uh, giving money or making money and um Maybe uh, we should make a, a money bomb <laughs> on Dark City. <laughs> we'll have a donation car. <laughs> people run. People uh, my only, uh, my only doubt, uh, Jabba, my only cringe when you were talking was when you said it was about appreciation. Um, so I, I, I can only conclude that Dark City is the most unappreciated station on the uh, on the internet. Um, Joking aside, though, man, I mean, it, 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 I don't see it. we either do it or we don't do it. Um, you know, um, it, it doesn't make any money. It loses money uh, every month. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, you know, what, 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 what else would we do? <laughs> you know, what else would we do? Today, yes, somebody asked me, um, so do you have shows? I say, no, I stopped music two years ago. And he, he say, uh, so you, you live on your uh, economies. And I say, no, I lose less money than when I did music. <laughs> 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 that don't means I have more money. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I paid more than 10 years, um, almost 15 years. I paid more than what I get out of my music. Um, that 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 was uh, because we did it. So uh, and uh, we we want to do it, and uh, that was our, our own choice. But uh, definitely, uh, making music in a, uh, if you are not professional and you have the whole uh, industry behind you, uh, you pay more for uh, making music than uh, what you get. Uh, and uh, um, yeah. The musicians, uh, they, of course, they never talk about uh, this kind of issue because they could uh, lose some promotion, and it's, it's like the same that a lot of a lot of musicians on on dance show la last time, also with the DJ who talk about the, the music industry and stuff, and a lot of musicians know, that, but they will never talk out because it they think it could uh, disturb their career. Okay, uh, we are in. In the end, or at the end of the B decoded after show uh, with Darren. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, BJ. Thank and uh, next week, uh, Danny Shine. Uh, <laughs> looking forward for that. And Shen Ross, we're going to do as soon as um, we find a slot to put him on. Uh, this will be a great show. I'm uh, looking forward for that too. Be decoded on Dark City. Thanks for listening. See you soon. I don't have to tell you things are bad. 
Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. Banks are going bust. We know the air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller. All we say is please at least leave us alone in our living room. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel belt and radios and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to write. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crying in the streets. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm as mad as hell, but I'm not going to take this anymore.